With reference to COPD, who can get COPD? So it is primarily a smoker's disease. Thank you. Um, about 85%. Uh, there are some cases and some better understanding that some environmental exposures are relevant, but for the most part, it is the tobacco industry's fault. Okay, I, I'm the director of BC, for BC Lungs in Nanaimo, and I'm also a chairperson for the Better Breathers Club of Nanaimo, right. of which we have about 100 members. There's a couple of things I want to say. Um, can smoker, can non-smokers get this? If they're exposed to secondhand smoke, yes. Okay. Uh, I think in general that would, w without any exposure, would be very un unlikely. Yes. Agreed. It's, yeah. Unless it's a genetic predisposition. I just thought I'd, I'd ask that in there. That way. Yeah. But we're, we we have a very large epidemiology study going on in yeah. Canada called Kenco, Canadian Cord Obstructive mm -hmm. Lung Disease. And to our surprise, those are random sample in nine cities across Canada, yeah. and 25 to 30 percent were never a smoker. Yeah. And uh, that's much higher than what we we thought. We we still have to figure out in the develop in the okay developing country. The biomass exposure is uh, in women yeah. can be number one cause for for COPD. But here, smoking is still the number the number. No, one. I, I agree. I just want to to confirm that non-smokers can get it, because I have it and I'm a non-smoker. I never smoked ah, in my life. There's an agenda. <laughs> <laughs> um, the other thing that you didn't cover is what aggravates the COPD. What are the three most aggravating points that cause the, the uh, COPD to act up? <laughs> I can tell you. You don't have to tell me. Please, yes. smoke. Then I, at least give me a chance that I okay. could put those in order. Just give me, and I'll I'll try okay. to put those in order. Okay. <laughs> the, the, go ahead. Oh, you want me to put smokers, perfume, and dust. So for anybody who's not a who has got COPD, they are very heavy, have a, a hard problem with smoke, dust, and with perfumes. So be aware when you go in places that uh, you might have smokers, I mean, uh, people with COPD, be aware of that. Thank you. The first rule is a smoke-free environment. I you agree. are right. Like we didn't mention about the perfume. Maybe we should start because some patients complain about it. Very much so. <laughs> Thank you. Well, there... one, one thing about COPD is that it's under Daniels. And I often say COPD is the Alzheimer of the lung. Then the same thing that you have applying to Alzheimer, applied to COPD. It's very insidious. By the time that the patient know that he or she has the disease, the disease is already quite advanced, and he's been or she's been hiding, okay, by reducing their activity and so on and so on. A lot of similitude with Alzheimer, except for the except for the smoking. That's why we're we're not so kind with COPD as we are with Alzheimer, because it seems that we have a reason and we tend to blame people, stigmatize, stigmatize people, and that came up many times. Okay, Alain mentioned that at the beginning. The patient mentioned that also in their work environment, and we have an, and that's a, that's a real that's that's a real, uh, a real issue. Oh, it was a very nice study it came out in, in the British Medical Journal a couple of years ago dis where the description was one given that it's just normal aging that I'm slowing down and getting more breathless. Um, that's where the diagnosis quite often gets missed.